This is KGW News at 11. Hello and welcome to KGW News at 11 on this Tuesday night. I'm Laurel Porter. Another day is almost in the books as we march onward through this difficult process together. Slowly but surely, we're starting to talk more about when we can return to normal. Today, Oregon Governor Kate Brown said there is no timeline yet on easing coronavirus restrictions, but she'll be watching five key areas in the coming weeks to decide when it's safe. Pat Doris explains. Oregon Governor Kate Brown refused to say when the first easing of restrictions will come, but she did share the five things she said need to be in place before anything happens. These are the key elements of the framework. Slow the growth, more PPE, testing capacity, contact tracing, and a quarantine and isolation program. It's not going to be easy, and it will take longer than we want. Governor Brown thanked Oregonians for working hard on physical distancing, which is flattening the curve of infections. In the upcoming weeks, she plans to draw on the expertise of many who are in areas hurt most by the shutdowns. We will gather input from healthcare professionals, public health experts, and from industries substantially impacted by the stay-at-home order. We will take a look at specific sectors of the economy, restaurants and food service, retailers, childcare, and personal services like hair and nail salons. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee has a similar plan. And that will involve uh, very large scale testing capacity increases, which we very much need. It will involve the much more robust contact tracing, what you might think of as small armies, to be able to get the folks as soon as they get a temperature. And uh, that's what we will be standing up. The governor hinted that the first restrictions in Washington state could come off as soon as May 4th. I asked him about comments from President Trump, who insisted President he had the total authority to lift restrictions shots. put in place by the states. I think there's going to be many fatalities in our country, but the Constitution will not be one of them. Uh, the Constitution is going to survive. We are going to continue to, rep to uh, recognize it and honor it. And that means that the people who put these stay home orders in place, which are the governors, both Republicans and Democrats, they're going to make the decisions when they come off. Both governors said the restrictions will come off a bit at a time and be guided by science and data, not politics. That was Pat Doris reporting. The city of Portland is making cuts to deal with coronavirus related budget problems. All non-union city employees must take 10 days of unpaid leave by October. And Mayor Ted Wheeler will give up his salary for the rest of the year. Portland faces a $100 million drop in general fund resources for the upcoming fiscal year, which starts July 1st. Airports across Oregon are getting financial help from the federal government. The Department of Transportation is sending a total of $140 million in grants to 55 airports in the state. The money is part of the federal stimulus package. PDX is set to get $72 million. It has seen a 94% drop in travelers compared to last year. New tonight, we know TriMed for its public transportation. Now several TriMed employees are shifting jobs to transport food. Our Catherine Cook reports. During the COVID-19 crisis, things look different. Rush hour, gone. Even TriMet has fewer riders as people stay home. But unchanged is our need to eat. So TriMet is taking some of its employees and putting them to work elsewhere, packing and delivering meals for Meals on Wheels. To meet a lot of our customers where they live and to be able to show a different side of TriMet is a lot of fun. Damien Samuelson works with on-street customer service for TriMet. You'll find him helping on the platforms after Blazers games and other big events. Since there are there is nothing being done as far as uh, sporting events or gatherings, uh, a better use of our time was to divert us to doing something to help the community. Meals on Wheels makes and delivers 8,000 meals a day across the Portland metro area. The organization says over the last month, their requests have skyrocketed along with the need for help. For the next month, Damien and six other TriMet employees will work eight hours a day delivering meals and doing wellness checks on those who receive them on TriMet's dime. They'll wear gloves, masks, and stay six feet away, but are always ready to connect and listen. 
talk to somebody about some interesting thing that had happened to them earlier in the day. And sometimes just being a listening ear is all they really need. It's just as important as having food. And while this is just a temporary job assignment, for Damien, it's also an opportunity to showcase what happens every day with Meals on Wheels and the countless volunteers who make it happen. So much of it is volunteer work. They're, a bunch of those folks are not getting paid to do what they do. They just do it out of, out of the kindness of their heart. Due to their increased demand for food, Meals on Wheels is incurring unprecedented costs right now. If you'd like to make a financial donation, you can do so by just going to the link on KGW.com. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Battleground High School's food pantry team is stepping up big time to help students during the pandemic. Nicole Bray usually runs it from the school, but since the doors close, she's been running the pantry from her living room with the help of her administrative team. The school is making food pantry items available to all students in the district, and Nicole says she's been busier than ever. It's just gotten so big that my admin team is like so incredibly awesome. I mean, it's just people dropping stuff on my doorstep. It's just crazy. And it feels so good to see that part of the community. If you live in the battleground area and are either in need of food or have donations you would like to drop off at the Family and Community Resource Center, you can find more information on the district's website. A Food Network star is doing what he can to help struggling restaurants. Guy Fieri is teaming up with a Portland law firm on the effort. KGW's Keeley Chalmers caught up with him to find out how we can help too. That's all right here, right now, on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. He's known as the spunky host of the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. That's some real deal. But like almost all in the restaurant industry, Guy Fieri is now self-distancing at home. Can I ask where, where you are? I'm up at our ranch in Northern California, right outside of Sonoma and Napa. He was kind enough to chat with me today on Zoom in what, for a lot of us, has become an exercise in humility. One way, shape or another, we're connected to the restaurant industry, like the seven degrees of separation. We're, you know, we're there's somebody with a number four just ran in the background. My, my um, six year old. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. My family is trying to jockey between interviews and times to when they can make breakfast to get something out of the fridge. But in between all that kitchen jockeying, Fietti is promoting a brand new fundraising effort to help all those impacted by all those now shuttered restaurants. Yeah, you know, it started off as just a, a little, it was a conversation between uh, good friends of mine actually there that are based out of Portland. Working with the Portland law firm at Davis Wright Tremaine, Fietti started the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund. And within, I'm going to say five, six days, we raised $8 million. And we're $15 million now. And the program is called RERF, Restaurant Employee Relief Fund. Uh, currently, we are getting 40 requests a second to the website. And we are in the process right now of, uh, of issuing $60,500 grants. Um, it just goes to show the restaurant industry has really been hit hard. Tens of thousands of restaurants are closed. Uh, Three million plus restaurant employees without jobs and uh, in a real need. In fact, there's been so many folks applying for the grant. The application process has been temporarily put on hold, which means the need for donations is even greater. Forever, we can remember, the restaurant industry uh, has served us. And now as a public, it's a chance for us to serve them. And Fietti says Portland is the perfect spot to do just that. We love our food scene. We love our food servers. And now we can show them just how much. But no, I love it. I love going up there. And I tell you something, you got one of the most expansive food scenes that are going on anywhere in the country. I really mean that. I mean, it's an amazing food scene. But um, we all help each other and take care of one another. We'll make it through this. At home in Portland, Keithley Chalmers, KGW News.